What is up guys, it's the Sound Alchemist and I'm back at it again to bring you 40 facts on the Warhammer 40k universe. This time, we're going to be talking about the Holy Knights of the Emperor, the Grey Knights, the 666th chapter. So the Grey Knights are pretty awesome in my opinion. Uh, they're a very elitist army and they kind of bring the pain hard and fast. I do play Grey Knights, I haven't played them in 8th edition yet, but I want to because I I, could, I hear that the Terminators are a lot better, although slower. So basically they just gotta teleport in and wreck face. But I'm not talking about the Grey Knights in general, this video will be focusing on the Grand Master, Aldrich Voldus of the Third Brotherhood. Now he's pretty G since he's currently accompanying Roboot Gilliman on his crusade to rid the universe of chaos. Really awesome stuff. Uh, if you guys want the full lore on him, head on over to the uh, Gathering Storm Part 3. Great stuff there. Also, the wiki has more information on him, as well as the Lexicanum. So I'm going to give you just the first part of his lore, and then you guys can go ahead and get the rest. Or if you want me to, leave a like, and if I get... A bunch of likes or a bunch of comments that you guys want more lore on him, I'll do his second part. But anyway, here is the beginning lore on Aldrich Voldus. Voldus was recently promoted to the leadership of the Grey Knights Third Brotherhood, a position that was rapidly becoming renowned as dangerous, perhaps even cursed. As Voldus became the Third Grandmaster of the Third Brotherhood in a single standard year. First, Valdar Arikon fell when the Third Brotherhood came to aid the Space Wolves during the demon Primarch Magnus the Red's assault on their invasion of the Fenris system. Arikon was killed by Magnus himself after the demon Primarch caught the Grandmaster's psychic lightning and hurled it back at him. This caused Arikon's body to turn into nuggets of fool's gold. When the next Grand Master of the Third Brotherhood, Dorian Narathem, was slain by the vile greater demon known as McCatchen during an assault on the fortress world of Longhallow. Brother Voldus unleashed a titanic second attack on the crackling demon. So pure and powerful was Narathem's sacrifice in the psychic light of Voldus's mind that in that moment it guided the Grey Knight Supreme Grand Master Kador Drago from the Realm of Chaos where he was trapped by a demonic curse. Surging into battle, the legendary warrior fought alongside Brother Voldus to drive McCatchen back into the warp, the two forging their powers into a banishment of unstoppable force. In the wake of the battle, Drago himself appointed the humble Voldus to the rank of Grand Master, lauding his exceptional heroism and phenomenal psychic prowess. Even as Drago faded back into the warp once again, Voldus swore an oath to live up to his great honor, one which the self-depreciating hero did not truly believe himself worthy. He strives towards this goal in every battle that he fights, offering prayers to the Emperor of Mankind for strength and guidance. Soon after the Ultramarines' defeat, the invasion of Ultramar by the Demon Prince Makar and his allies among the Iron Warriors, the Grey Knight Prognosticars saw a frightening vision of a darkness drawing nigh to the light of Ultramar, and a black blade, inscribed with the infernal star of the Chaos Gods, thrust at a heart enthroned. Even as one caverner small yawned wide, another set of jaws closed upon Macrag and its sister worlds, ending the Prognosticar's visions in a sea of blood. Fearing that Ultramar a vital bulwark amongst the greater ramparts of the Imperium itself was in danger of falling, and thus threatening the rest of the Imperium, Voldus ordered the entire Third Brotherhood to make its way to Ultramar and aid the Ultramarines in its defense. He sent word of the Grey Knight's coming to the Ultramarines' chapter master, Marnius Calgar, who graciously accepted the aid of the potent Astartes Psychers. After their arrival of the survivors of the fall of Cadia, who called themselves the Celestian Crusade, alongside their Xenos Yunari allies, Voldus shared the Ultramarine's officers' suspicions of the newcomer's plan to revive the Primarch Gilliman, long in stasis in McCrag's Temple of Correction. When the forces of Chaos launched the massive assault on the temple to prevent the Archmagos Dominus Belisarius' call 
and Yevrain, the Yunari priestess of Yunen, the elder god of the dead, from combining technology and divine power to heal Gilliman's mortal wound, Voldus fought hard to buy them more time. After Gilliman's successful resurrection following the battle in the temple, Voldus and his Grey Knights became a key component of the resurrected Primarch's strategy to retake Macrag and all of Ultramar from the Ark enemy. After a campaign of seven solar months, much of Ultramar was retaken, but the Chaos Gods proved more than willing to prevent the Primarch from using his abilities to aid the Wilder Imperium's defense from their growing power. Nurgle, the Plague Lord, unleashed a sorcerous disease upon the mortal soldiers of Ultramar, called the Sorrow. This disease possessed unnatural symptoms. In the midst of battle, the warriors were blinded by endless streams of vicious, stinking tears that gummed their eyes open and soon turned them bread raw. Overcome by sorrow, sufferers wailed and wept for solar days on end. In the worst cases, this so-called weepers were permanently blinded as their infected eyeballs festered and rotted from their skulls. But Gilliman discovered that whatever he made his presence known, those afflicted with the illness were miraculously cured. And so began the long solar weeks of relentless pilgrimage for Gilliman, as he rushed from one site of sickness to another all across the entirety of the Ultramar region. The Primarch knew that while he was engaged in healing his followers, his attentions were drawn away from the war. Yet all of the Emperor's sons, Gilliman was perhaps the most human, and thus his compassion would not allow him to ignore his followers' plight, if he could indeed heal them. These solar weeks became months, during which the weeping continued to spread, and worse still, recur at sites that the Primarch had already cleared. Without Gilliman's peerless genius, the reconquest of Ultramar began to suffer, and the Chaos forces overturned Imperial victories in the Viridian and Tarvin systems. All the while, the dreadful warp storms that had riven Ultramar and its surroundings worsened even further. Soon, whispered the navigators, the Empire of the Ultramarines might be cut off from the galaxy altogether, just as it once had 10,000 Terran years before the time of the Ruin Storm. It was Aldric Voldus who finally confronted Gilliman in a heated argument during which the Grand Master dared the Primarch's wrath. He forced Gilliman to acknowledge that which he already knew. Weeks of labor had been for naught. Gilliman was not healing his subjects, for such was not his gift. In the Weeping Plague, Voldus recognized all the hallmarks of Nurgle. Most likely, the plague god was simply withdrawing his dubious blessings from his victims upon Gilliman's arrival, and then gleefully restoring them once the Primarch had moved on. The Lord of Ultramar was playing into the plague god's hands, his desire to save his people perverted into a never-ending trap of entropy and despair. Though furious, Gilliman accepted Voldus' wisdom. Further, he saw that Nurgle's desire had been to trap him within his own realm, and to keep him from the wider galactic stage. The Primarch realized then that his desire for completeness, for a neat solution, and an unsullied Ultramar was in and itself an echo of mistakes he had made long ago. Nurgle did not wish Gilliman to leave Ultramar because there, the Primarch could be contained like a wasp in a bottle. But this war did not belong to Ultramar alone. It was a war for the entire Imperium. Gilliman saw that he could not waste any more time focusing solely upon his own stellar emperor. He must tend instead to his father's realm. Now before I get too deep into the whole lore behind the Gathering Storm 3 and the Terran Crusade, let's jump over to the war gear of the Grand Master. So he does wield psych out grenades which are a very rare type of grenade used by the Grey Knights. They are a potent anti-psyker weapon. They look much like a frag grenade, but what it really does is that it is a byproduct of the Golden Thrones Arcane working. So it emits a strong anti-psychic charge that basically nullifies a psyker, allowing them to be cut off from the warp and thus not be able to use any psychic powers. He also wears an iron halo, which is a symbol of high office amongst the Grey Knights. 
It is not merely a token or a treasure, but a powerful defense in its own right. Beneath the halo's shining metal lies a powerful energy that can thwart even the most cataclysmic blows away. He carries a storm bolter into battle, which is a double-barreled version of the standard boltor. It is heavier and it causes more recoil, but it is more powerful than the standard one. He does wear Aegis Terminator armor, so it is used by the Grey Knights and is similar to the Indomitus pattern Terminator armor, although it does have a complex network of protective prayers and runes, which are psychically charged to provide better protection against sorcerers' powers from demons and other servants of chaos. And lastly we have the Malleus Argyrum. Crafted over a standard century by the blind smith Hulliver, this beautifully weighted force hammer is a conduit for psychic energies. So empowered, it streaks through the air as though it weighed nothing at all, only to strike with the force of a caged thunderbolt. And that is where I will finish the lore on Valdus. The more I get into his lore, the more it becomes Gilliman's lore, and the more that becomes the lore for Gathering Storm Part 3. And that reminds me that I never actually put out the video to it. I've read the book, but I never got along to making it. So in my defense, be ready guys, because lore for that will be out probably within the next couple of days. So forgive me for waiting way too long to put out that lore. I must have forgotten about it. But anyway guys, let me know in the comments below what you guys would have done. Would you have listened to Voldus and if you were, if you were in Gilliman's position? Would you have listened to Voldus and gone out into that crusade, or would you stay there and try to tend to the people, even though you kind of knew that Nurgle was playing you? But still, though, Gilliman's too gullible, man. He's he's got to he's got to toughen up. Anyway, guys, like I said, that's all the time I have for you today. I will catch you tomorrow. And as always, I'm the Sound Alchemist, part of One Mind Syndicate, signing out.